Hey YouTube, welcome back to the Nomad76 channel. So today is going to do another Coleman video. Um, what inspired this is, uh, you know, of course I have, you've been on my channel for a little while, uh, or seen any of my videos, you realize I have quite a few Coleman videos. And um, <clears throat> because of those videos, I get quite a few questions about, you know, how to fix certain problems. Or oh, as uh, mostly in relation to Coleman lanterns. Um, so to help kind of identify some of those issues and, and some of the parts associated with those problems, I'm going to do this video today, um, to kind of maybe, uh, provide the answers that people are looking for. Uh, if I'm not providing the answer in this video or any of my other videos, which, uh, my playlist will be linked in this video for you guys to peruse through and see if there's something there associated to your problem or your model of lantern. Um, <clears throat> for reference in this video, I'll be using the 220F uh, model uh, lantern and uh, its parts or some old parts that I have. I also have the old lantern over here um, that uh, I may refer to as, um, as we proceed. Uh, first, a little bit of parts identification uh, and this nice little diagram usually came with uh, with your lantern when you got them new. And let me adjust the camera here a little bit. Okay. Um, <clears throat> that, um, however, most of the time when you end up, you know, buying an old lantern, you get it from a yard sale or yard uh, garage sale, whatever. Um, and um, it doesn't come with that. So, I am not associated with them, but I highly recommend their website. It is oldcolemanparts.com. I'll probably provide a link below in the description block. Uh, you can, as long as you know the model of lantern that you have, uh, which is usually labeled either on the bottom of the tank or on the side uh, of the um, little bezel part in between the tank and the uh, globe, usually the shiny, well, let me just go ahead and put it in here. So, like on this 220 model, right there, see 220F. So, um, oh, bu -bu -bu. so there, that is, you know, and you can click on that. You can find the parts breakdowns. You can find parts, used and new parts on their website. Cool website. Um, not the only source of, uh, for finding Coleman lantern parts, but a, a good one at that. Um, <clears throat> all right, so. To do a breakdown a little bit, just like I said, for to help uh, everyone better understand what I'm talking about. Uh, if you look here, so from here up to here, that part is within your tank. Now that may vary depending on the model. Newer models, it's an actual plastic piece that's down in, in the tank. Um, and then you've got your valve body. And this is the one that's got the knob on the side for adjusting the the flow rate to obviously which would uh, whether you want to go from high to low on the uh, output of the light production from your lantern but primarily what it does is it adjusts the uh, the, the fuel um, flow uh, that goes into what's called your cleaner assembly uh, cleaner assembly body if you want to add it I mean the description I think calls it uh, just a clean or valve assembly less uh, and then which then you also have the uh, generator which connects to the top and the cleaner assembly which is the part that comes out this side right here which is this part right here if you notice that piece that comes over here it's the part you spin and we'll get into that the function of that piece here in a minute uh, newer models do not have that cleaner assembly uh, so therefore, if you have a newer model, you're not going to have that piece. Um, air tube, which in this model, threads into this part of this valve assembly, uh, or body, and it is just there. It does not have to be sealed to this, uh, but it, it is just what it, I call it. It's an air tube. It provides air up into the upper section here. We'll get into that as we move our way up. Um, just, uh, as note, um, this part, which threads into your tank or fountain, 
um, the, the fuel tank. Call the fountain in the description just so you know you know what I'm talking about. It does need sealant compound. Uh, I prefer a sealant compound, a liquid type, not a uh, Teflon style. Uh, that is a preference uh, and a recommendation, not a requirement. So leave your comments to yourself, people. Uh, <laughs> anyways, um, this for where this valve assembly or body threads into the actual valve here for the control valve also requires a sealant. This nut right here is a jam nut that tightens down it's jammed up so um ha -ha. uh to the um frame the lower frame piece for the uh globe so the little metal part right down here so let's see right there that's the same jam nut basically so that is not a seal that just kind of pinches that um in between here and here <clears throat> so this part air tube comes up air tube has a little on this model has a little set screw back here uh, that goes into there this just threads into this part right here and then down to there's a hole and i'll show you that here after we get to through the uh the real important part here this little little guy all right gas generator to or disassembly to the gas generator it's got a tapered uh, surface therefore does not require sealant but needs to be tightened um and snug not remember these parts uh, obviously on the older ones are brass some are metal um but they're not like you're not applying high amount of torque so you would apply the 7 16 for this model a what I would call a sharp rising torque or an arc torque uh, in, in some cases. So this piece, we're going to go ahead and pull it out just like this. This is not really how it would come out. Is the eccentric block. So let's zoom in on that. All right, so the eccentric block, notice there's a little cutout right here. That faces outward to the uh, cleaner assembly that I pointed out actually on the lantern I got over here out of screen that a little rod goes in and as it rotates kind of like this one is bent I'm just using this as an example it moves that that block oops up and down so from, if you were removing this from a actual assembly that was on a lantern, and like I said, I'm, once again, I'm using this because I think it's a little e maybe easier for you guys to see versus my hands always end up in the way on the actual, uh, some of my other disassembly and reassembly videos. Uh, so I'm hoping this is a little better. And you guys will let me know, I'm sure. So notice how it comes in and out. It would basically do that. Um, that moves this rod that's in the center of the, the gas generator and at the top, and I'll show you that in a minute, there's a little small orifice with a little needle that goes in there, basically provides metering. But by being able to manually move that up and down, um, it helps, you know, clear out any carbon buildup in that orifice area that may be affecting the uh, performance of the lantern. Uh, I know you know years of use the lantern uh sometimes you know would be kind of acting sputter you know it's buttering a little bit or maybe not producing as much light you'd come over and rotate that a few times and uh it clean up and it'd sound better and the light production would be better so that's not a you know tested theory i just you know using lanterns for uh a lot over the years Oh, that's just been an experience of mine. So this is the gas generator, as they call it. This part, uh, depending on the model, uh, in the 220s should be using all pretty much the same part, um, which makes them fairly affordable. Um, and um, 
you know, they tell Walmart, Amazon, oldcomerandparts.com, you know, um, the, uh, you know, all over the place, you know, so five to ten dollars if you're spending more than ten i've never seen one more than ten dollars um maybe something for a real rare one or something like that um but this assembly very carefully these things are not um if you notice there if i get the camera focus yeah see that little needle let me try to zoom out and see if that helps. Sorry, guys. Um, so there's that little tiny needle there at the top. That goes through that little tiny orifice up there. And you notice there's this spring right here. That helps this hole. And I, and I am not, you know, an engineer or anything crazy. Um... But basically, this is, is this is kind of like I equate things because I, I have a lot of experience with automotive uh, products, kind of like the in a carburetor, um, the jets in a carburetor. I know if you're not familiar with carburetors, you might be, uh, you know, wondering what I'm talking about. But it's basically a metering device to meter fuel flow. Um, so. Um, quick, real quick to reassemble. So, um, if you have that out, you just first, you put the end up into the air tube, you drop it down, you slide it into that little portion of the upper part of the eccentric block. You slide this down, thread it on. Once again, I mentioned for this model, 7 16 open end wrench. Tighten down, sharp raise and torque. Um, basic, good and tight. Um, <clears throat> so, that part, because of the price, if I'm having what this seems to be a fuel flow issue, you know, sputtering and poor light output, and I've checked a few other things first because those are easy to check and basically free, a little bit of, you know, time. Uh, I will check air tube, make sure air tube is not blocked. Uh, with mine, I'm usually not concerned about the air tube because of the way I store them. The key is that air tube is a nice little nesting place for insects. Um, if they've been, you know, bought one at a garage sale or wherever, there's a potential because where it was stored, uh, it could, you know, have a, you know, Spiders, whatever, could build a nest up inside there, which could either restrict or completely block the airflow. Therefore, not getting, you need an air fuel mixture for this thing to work properly. Just like your car. Um, uh, so, air travels up that tube into the next part we're going to discuss the mixing chamber. Um, fuel's coming up this, up the generator. I talk the very top, there's that orifice in that little, you know, needle, basically the meter, metering that, that flow. Um, it mixes in the, the tube, Just simple, real simple, you know, here, comes down these burner tubes. These are all technically separate parts, air tube, mixer, um, and the burner tubes could, can be individually replaced. Uh, I think they're pretty hard to find. Most of the time you just find the whole assembly. Um, <clears throat> and older ones, you're going to, you're own, you're, far as I know, there's no one that making new ones. You're going to get a, a used one that's in good shape. Um, on the back here, you can see very, this one's rusty because it's a steel type. They could be steel or brass, uh, a little set screw that holds that upper air tube in there. That one, I, I would have, unless you soak this thing in uh, Marvel Mystery Oil or something like that, or Penetrant Oil, uh, for a while, you probably heck a heck of a time getting that out of there just due to time, the heat and corrosion, you know, heating up, expanding, cooling, all that stuff usually just makes things seize really nicely. Um, <clears throat> and then they come down there and you've got your mantles right, would be right here mounted to this, these little flange areas here. Um, 
your gas mixture comes out and you hit it with some sort of ignition source and poof you've got light let there be light okay uh so that with that said seems to be a fuel flow issue i don't have any visual leaks meaning when i turn on i put applied pressure to the tank you know and i've turned the valve on or i not even turn the valve on just apply pressure to the tank sometimes if you have a pressure to the tank and you could have leakage around the top you would most likely notice that coming out around the tank or the fountain uh, same thing just different terminology right you know coming out around here around the base um, um, the valve coming out of here uh, which could be rectified there is a, a nut that goes on there be nut type style it goes on there um, and then um, um, with the valve on maybe a time that you might see fuel coming out around this area uh, or up in here if there's a leak there uh, those are all things you can just quickly visually check for apply pressure to the tank you know pump it all the way up to good you know you got a good amount of pressure in there take a good look at it you know use a flashlight to look inside kind of around the bezel area um you know and then you might be able to smell if there's you know well usually if you just filled it up with fuel you're going to smell fuel no matter what <clears throat> around the cleaner could potentially be um less likely check to see that this is this nut for the gas generator snug all those seem good go ahead and replace your generator they're it, you know they're not that expensive um if it ends up not being the problem okay now you've got a spare generator for a lantern that most likely you're going to have for your lifetime because these things last forever so um big deal you got a five to ten dollar part that you now just put in a ziploc bag and put in a store you know somewhere you got a spare or you've got a or your problem solved um that that is my solution for those type of problems um next would be uh pressure issues not being able to build pressure in the tank this is your 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 pump assembly that this is the leather style that is a leather packing down here that you know cup that as long as it's properly oiled it typically will still create pressure that allows it to seal around the side wall and create pressure uh, the rubber style can get dry rotted just as bad as the leather ones can sometimes the leather ones can be restored with by soaking them in oil uh, the, the rubber style ones not so much but those are replaceable uh, also just that piece um, and this that little weird kind of square looking thing down there in the bottom is actually a nut uh, you can unthread that off there and they're just a pair of pliers and then put on the new gland and be ready to go key is it says oil for a reason keep it oil um, <clears throat> another problem is we'll try to wrap this up this is the valve this is what this when you turn this it turns this little square stock here there's a valve seat right there that valve seat can get damaged usually only if someone's taken it out and dropped it or whatever uh, so that it, when you tighten it down to close it so that it keeps air in the tank it doesn't work anymore or it doesn't create a good seal slow usually it's a slow leak and you know pressure leaks off quicker than it should uh, or there's a check valve down in there and that usually the symptoms of that are you're pumping and you cannot create pressure uh, because that little it's a little ball on a spring and if it's stuck open it's everything you're pumping in is just escaping right back out so uh that is down and dirty as fast as i could make it i know it's still a long video um <clears throat> kind of some symptoms and parts and pieces uh, that you can hopefully will help you troubleshoot your uh, coleman lantern if you have questions or you need to see more you need to see something you know in more detail let me know in the comments below i will be happy to create a video as long as i have interest enough interest for it heck probably one comment will be enough for me uh thanks for watching this nomad 76